two, St. Patrick's Day. I am Sally Blue's sister, and this is my turn to talk. Welcome, Barbara. I'm here. You are number one, class one pro. You are number two. Welcome. Welcome, Frankie. You're number three. <laughs> Bob beat you today. So today's show is supposed to be hosted by Chill, but he is MIA. So I'm going to give him a uh, <laughs> some time to uh, to pop up, and uh, we can get started with his show because this is the show that he is doing. So. But while we are waiting, um, let's see. I am going to send him a little reminder here. And here he is, <laughs> just about to send out a reminder to you. So, Jill, um, You have the mic. This is your show. I'm just here as the administrator. And I'm just going to sit back and you, you go right ahead. Absolutely. Um, hey, everybody. Once again, it's me, your boy, Chill Will. And we're here today to chop it up once again about, um, a, I think it's, I don't know necessarily it's a peculiar topic, but it's um, definitely been um, a topic that I, I spoke about about a month ago with some friends at Starbucks. I know it seemed kind of cliche, but I was like, man, this would probably be a good topic for the show, which would be um, stay-at-home fathers. The untraditional household that seems to be kind of more traditional. Um, I was looking at some like some statistics. I think it was like maybe last year. Um, and it was talking about how like about around from since like 2000, maybe 10, maybe like 3 million, 2 million, 3 million fathers, like stay-at-home fathers uh, went from being, you know, more stay-at-home fathers, 2 to 3 million more since then. And um, women, are, just be, let's be honest, women are doing a dang thing and they're making the money a lot of times, and especially in um, certain cultures, they're making the money, they bring it home the bread, they're the bread winners. And so my thoughts is how everybody would feel about that. Um, me personally, I, sometimes I struggle with it because I feel like a man should be not should be he should be making money. Period. Like I, I'm tr I'm a traditionalist by heart. You know, you have to conform to some way to society and how and you know you want to be a I don't be a chauvinistic uh, mentality all my life, right? You get you in, you get indoctrinated, and the last thing I want to be is you know that type of guy. And um, to be honest, you know, if if who who am I to hold my specific? Uh, well, there's I'm sorry about the I mean, uh, mute the the vibrate. Um, who am I to tell my significant other not to go out there and do her darn thing? And um, if she has an opportunity to go abroad or or just do something special, uh, run I don't know politics. She's a musician, or she's just flat out like I don't know, a doctor, a lawyer. She's making a lot of money, and um, a lot of people don't like daycare. They want to raise their own kids. The beneficial, of a tra the benefits of a, tr a traditional setup, whether the father or mother, can be astronomical in my eyes, especially if the father is more nurturing. Right? The father sometimes <laughs> the mom may not be the most patient one in the household, and so I want to open up the floor to that discussion. 
if y'all calling in, I'm sure Solid Blue will see you. Come on up here and um, chime in. Uh, what up, Byram? What up, Feisty One? What up? Yeah, and um, I, I, I'm gonna open up the you know the floor up to Solid Blue. And um, if you kindly, like once again, the rules are: mute your mic until you call upon uh, specifically, and you know, uh, you can unmute your mic and mute your mic. You don't have to leave it up to Solid Blue. Like make her do all the work, especially when I'm here today, Proctor and everything. What up, Frankie? Um, also, uh, you know, be mindful in in, in, the, in the way we speak to e each other, at least. I'm not saying don't curse or don't, you know, just be mindful that uh, we're all here and we're all humans and we have feelings. Okay. All right, Solid Blue. All right. Um, I just want to add one thing to his rules. The, the bitch and hoe, not on my show. <laughs> so not not here. But you know, um Shell, it's interesting that, you know, what you said, um, in terms of, you know, the household, sometimes the mother's not always the most nurturing um one in the household. And and that was with with my household. My father was the more nurturing one. Um, as opposed to my mother. Um, so, um, you know, I think that dads play a huge part in raising kids. Um, for, for me growing up, um, you know, my mom worked and she was a teacher. Um, and my dad was a postal worker. And, um, because of some of the issues I had growing up as a child, I went through speech speech therapy until I was about 12. Um, you know, I was in, you know, a lot of um, uh, like the band, choir, um, um, ballet, you know, just different things. And my dad was always the one that took me. He, when I had, you know, to go to the dentist, braces, everything, my dad was always the one that that took me. So I developed a relationship, um, a closer relationship with my, my father. But I do believe that um, fathers are um, a huge part of the family um, dynamic. So with that, I'll pass the mic. Okay, bye. Hey, bud. Hey, Solid Blue. Hey, Frankie and all the people in the chat. Um, great intro and great topic, Chill. I loved it as soon as I heard it. This is right up my street. Uh, I've I've never successfully had this conversation without, you know, some, some you know, hatred towards my views. But it, I think it's only because maybe people don't understand the, what, the way I'm trying to put it across. But I do believe that... Um, you know, the one parent staying home and not working is the best uh, for the children. It's best for the household. It's best for relationships. It's best all around. And and I think that that was the, the, the case pre-1940, pre-1950. Most uh, couples were, you know, one, one. It was usually the woman. Yes, I agree. Um, and, I, and I think that is the best of the two. Um, I hope no women get offended at this, but... I believe the woman is the better one for staying at home because nurturing young children, uh, they are key to that. And then, like I've said before on the show, I think the 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 mum brings up the kid for the first, you know, fifteen probably years, and then the dad kind of takes over. Not not like that. Maybe seems a bit broad, like a extreme. Like it's not take over, and the, the the father's not anything to do with the first fifteen years or sixteen years. It's just you know the nurturing the the young. You know, when they're, when they're a baby, obviously it needs its mum more than the dad and, and all that and nurturing. And then, you know, when it grows up to, you know, adulthood and, and the big wide world, the dad kind of the moral guidance and the, the big white, you know, the big bad world, you know, learning uh, what, what's going on there. So I love this topic. And, and what I'll say to defend, you know, before any women hate on me for saying that, I also agree with the other way around. I think, you know, if the woman, I've, I've often said to to my wife, Roxy, if she was to be making 60, 70,000 pounds a year or, or even like enough to cover 
both of us, I would happily stay at home, happily, and look after the house, cook the meals, have the meals ready, you know, and in and, and between that, go out and have a game of golf. You know, I think it's, you know, women who hate on people for saying that, th- they should really think about it. I think they're they're being blinded by the misogyny and the feministic kind of like rhetoric that w- they're being pushed on them. And if they actually thought about it, you know, do you really enjoy going out every morning, waking up, setting alarms and going out? Because I certainly would rather be staying at home and looking after the house. But th- that's just me. And I'll pass the mic. Okay, quick question, Bob. Now you mentioned uh, the rhetoric. What what kind of rhetoric? Elaborate on that part really quickly before we move on to uh, Katisha. Is it Katisha or Charlotte? Well, we'll go in order. We'll, we'll both get, you'll both get your say. And um, listen, could yeah. y'all just keep me for a sec? I that's, don't mean to cut y'all off. Skip me for a second because I'm on the phone with Ab- my son on the other line. Absolutely, absolutely. So I go to Charlotte next after Bob uh, ex- explains what he means by the rhetoric and, and so, like I think the cliche term. Yeah, so so the easiest way for me to explain it is, um, and I hope my, I don't know if my wife's listening, but she she wouldn't mind me sharing the story. But I think you know, and I already knew this as well. But see, America, it's kind of based around a lot of the women there, and I'm being very broad in general. So please, nobody you know get on my case. But I think women in America are kind of more targeted for you guys need to to have a career and forget about having babies and wait till you're older. And then, you know, women get till their, their late 20s, early 30s and realize, well, I might miss the boat. And then they're struggling to, to have babies. And uh, I think a, lo- a lot of women end up regretting that decision. And, you know, it, it you know, it, there's there's no greater gift in the world than, than having a, another, you know, a child. So I think uh, the rhetoric of like the feminists and, and the, the misogyny that whenever a man says, no, no, you should just stay at home. There, there's a better way of saying it than that. And I, you know, you're never going to, women are going to push back on that when you just say you guys are, you know, you guys should just stay at home. But, you know, when hopefully you guys have taken me well, when I say it, I think it is best if the woman stays home and looks after the children and gives them, you know, all the the care and and attention that they need because it's a a hard job. And and what you'll see is that the, the, the state are actually bringing up our children because both parents have to go out and work and the, the kids being thrown to, into school and then sometimes they're even after school care and not getting picked up till, you know, supper time and then it's supper and go to bed. So, you know, I, 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 I don't know why anyone disagrees with that, um, but we'll see how the show goes on. <laughs> okay, well, absolutely. So those, those definitely gave me some thoughts in reference to uh, the value you hold on the traditional household, and I, and I can agree. I'm not going. I'm not going to say that it has to be the mom or the father, but that whole setup, I think, is valuable. Um, and yeah, I don't know that, that you might get some heat. So are we gonna we gonna find out? So um, is Charlotte, is Charlotte. Yeah, I'm ready. Hey, everybody. Hey. Um, I think that that's is interesting because. Even before you had announced the uh, topic, I was reading an article about the first black woman to be CEO of a major corporation. I believe her name, her first name is Ursula, and she was the CEO of Xerox. And I was reading something where she said that now her husband was also a professional. Uh, I forgot what he did. I think he was a scientist at Xerox, but she was clearly the one that was pegged to break the glass ceiling. So she said that um, they decided that he would be the one to stay home and be a you know, stay at home dad because her career was, was excelling. And she, you know, I, I really liked some of the things that she said because she said, and she was honest, they had two kids and she said, you know, um, there were some times when I missed my kids, um, I didn't go to every game. And she said, I'm okay with that. You know, she was like, I'm okay with that. She said, but I was, I was, I was there for them when I, when I could be. And um, she didn't like make any apologies. And I think it's good that if you are that kind of mom that really don't want to stay home and you are the one that's, that's clearly going to excel in, in, in the, um, uh, 
money making for the household, then I think that's that's something that you know you should go for. Not necessarily neglecting your kids. I don't think um, she was um, neglecting her kids or anything like that. She was just it was just a reverse of the roles. She was the one that went all the way to the top CEO. So when people talk about uh, generational um, wealth and things like that. I'm sure that she has changed that for her her family and generations to come. So my hat is off to her. I don't I don't, you know, have any negativity toward a woman who feels that she she needs to do what she needs to do in order to um, you know, have her family in a certain in a certain lifestyle. Okay, okay, that's great. Now, Shaw Lady, I want to ask you a quick question. So how about if um she's not at home to breastfeed or or she's not at the home to see the first first step or you know, like sleep with a, a, a newborn at night. I, I mean, I know you said games. That sounds like a you know, a little bit, a little bit older child. So, I mean, I think a lot of people would say that you know that the younger child is when you need the mom most, right? And so, yeah, how, how I, long I, is too long or too? I I totally agree because I, I have a I have a college degree and um, I always wanted to be one of those those career women. And I was for like the first 10 years after I got out of college and I got married and I had kids right away, back to back. They were like, like a year apart. And my husband was making more money than I was. And he had just, just so happened to have gotten a promotion um, that made the money that he made replace the money that I was making. And it was almost um, triple. So it made sense for me to, to stay home because when I looked at the cost to put them in daycare, it I, I was only probably retaining a hundred dollars after, you know, all the expenses that it takes to to be a working mom. So and, and put kids in daycare. And I I stayed home for like 20 years and I, I raised them. I did all that breastfeeding, all the games and things like that, while my husband um did a lot of traveling. And I think that there are certain women. And I, I know my daughter was sharing with me with, with, with her job. There are some women who are up there on the ladder, senior level uh, executives, and they are working, but they're like taking time off like that first year to be with the kids. But me personally, I think the first three years are very, very crucial um, to a kid. Now, they could pump the milk, but I do think that first, that particularly that first year of life, I think you need to be with your kid that first year of life. Maybe take uh, some time off. I know some people, some companies are giving family leaves of five, six months. I think that is crucial, absolutely crucial. So I do agree on on, on that level for sure. Okay, awesome. So I wonder, uh, I wonder why you know if a if a man was to say that, would it be taken the same way as as from you saying it? <laughs> That's interesting. Prob- but, uh... Probably. Um, now I had a I had a, um, a gynecologist who has a practice where she has lots and lots of patients. She has her own office, beautiful office, African American woman, and um, her husband is a stay at home dad. And she she caught a lot of flack from from people because of that, including you know some of her own relatives. And she had to kind of come to terms with um, with with how people perceived it. And, you know, she would, you know, would, would, would say, you know, we, we have reverse roles, but, you know, I never judged her, but, you know, she had a very, very successful practice, still practicing to this day, delivered, you know, my, one of my kids. So um, I don't think she was one of those women that's, that's, that probably took a lot of time off, time off because she had such a successful practice, but, you know, it works for some people. That's anyone can hear me. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I forgot to push the uh, mute button. I'm getting used to this, y'all. Okay. <laughs> no problem. Me. All right. So okay. So I'll pa- uh, that's that's awesome. I'm gonna pass the mic before I pass the mic to Sally Boo. I want to read a couple things in the in the chat. Uh, Class One Pro, welcome. He says American schools want to want to determine the values of our child. They sometimes conceal lessons le- le- lesson plans from parents, and I wonder why. Um, that's probably speaking in reference to by um. Bob's comment about how how the kids are being raised by the state and when parents have two jobs and that's a, that's a whole other show in itself. But I, I'm going to take that comment and I'm going to I'm a little move forward a little bit because that can open up a whole another Pandora's box. Um, and uh, Frankie, 
uh, says a household benefits if the wife works, especially if there are girls in the household. You sh yeah, she's gonna have to elaborate a little bit on that one. And um, yeah, that's awesome. And the mama bear says my brother took maternity leave from his job and he ended up losing his job. I think his wife took the first half and he took the second. Oh, that's that's interesting. Which is also another. <laughs> kind of like a, a subject in itself but we're gonna um go ahead and go to solid blue can't you hear can you hear me you look like you're unmuted maybe did you leave i'm 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 going to pass it over to to katisha because i do believe she is back oh okay got you yeah i'm sorry yeah katisha how forgive me katisha <laughs> <laughs> um now, what the, the, I, I'm partially in and partially out. Y'all know I have to talk to my babies at any given time. Okay. Um, so, well, the topic today initially, we're just commenting on the uh, the non traditional household of fathers staying at home, and um, and and that that initial thought process of it. How do you feel about it? Um, uh -uh. <laughs> no, listen. In in the good history book, the Bible, man, it don't work. Don't eat. I listen. I did. My husband played video games for three years of our lives. I couldn't even have sex with him because he was so into the video games. No, you get your ass up out of here and go work with me. I mean, that's just it. I'm, it's it's hard. And I live. I come from Connecticut. Connecticut is, um, and I live in South Carolina now. But Connecticut, the cost of living is like three times of what I'm in right now. You know, the the two bedroom, two bathroom apartment that I'm in now. If I was in Connecticut, I'd be paying like almost eighteen hundred for it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the value when you work, it, it don't add up. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna have to have everybody's gonna have to have a job. Even the doggone kids gonna have to have side jobs in order for you to maintain a life. Um, it's 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 hard. I mean, the economy's getting the the money's increasing for payment out, and you're not getting nowhere with it. I mean, I'm not if I had the education and the um, you know, the career to do so, then I still wouldn't do it because I don't want nobody to be bored. I'd be at home happy, and I'm bored at work. Okay. Okay. So, you you, you are you so you're against the traditional setup in general, um, whether it's men. because they're they're the values of tradition have decreased, haven't they? I mean, the, back in the day, the man used to work and the woman used to stay home with the kids. Nobody does that now. Women are getting careers. They have they ha they have their own lives. They're taking a pathway to success. You know what I'm saying? I mean, nobody. I mean, I per I particularly don't want to be no stay at home mom. I tried it. It ain't worth it. Not for me. It it's the, the sanity for me. I mean, yeah, I all three of my kids I breastfed. Um, my oldest son he would not take milk off nothing but the breast, so he had to come to my job and be breastfed at times, or I would go home. And then I ended up um, moving closer to my job, so it was kind of more convenient. But he wouldn't take. He would not drink milk out of the bottle. I don't care where I pumped it from or how quick it came off the breast. He wouldn't take it. You know what I'm saying? Um, eventually, after like a year and a half, he started doing his own thing and he ripped one out of my shirt. And I just said, listen, that's it for you, brother. You have no more breastfeeding. My other son, um, I, I mean, all of them were breastfed and I did. I still went to work and still I still breastfed those children. You know, um, it, it was I mean, so, everything, so, everything is a task. So, even so really quick, if you did make enough money, if you made, I don't know, two hundred thousand dollars a year. And you and you and, and you had a father could stay at home. You still wouldn't do it. You don't you don't like that whole idea. Period. Just I don't want my boy, I don't want my children to believe that they should have to. I mean, I don't want my children to see anything decreasing for our household. You know what I'm saying? Um, things are. I mean, people don't even kid. I, I don't never see people cook dinner anymore. You know what I'm saying? I take something out, clean the chicken, wash it. I see people take stuff and just throw it in the oven and keep it moving. I mean, it's not. I don't want to decrease the the value of what I've been taught you know what i'm saying so i don't want to change my values my values are kind of different i've some of the values that i've learned i had to pick up on my own you know what i'm saying and i'm a little bit stubborn um i want my kid i want my kids to be able to be independent my boys and my daughter i want they cook now you know what i'm saying my kids can cook I, i'll stand in the kitchen and watch my son eat clean chicken my oldest son he clean chicken he can fry it he can cut up collard greens he might can't cook them to where they taste good but he can put them in the pot he wash them and put them in a the pot you know what I'm saying? I mean, what if he never has, what if he never has a wife? You know what I'm saying? Who's going to be doing a traditional thing for him anyway? Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. That's interesting. So we're going to go and right before we go to solid blue, and, um, 
I want to read a couple. Frankie, I think she elaborated on her comment that I was speaking about. Girls tend to become second class citizens if they see moms are only stay at home moms. Girls need to know that they can do anything. Understood. Understood. Um, Charlotte says, I think a man should do something from home on a part time level. Okay. Uh, Mama, Mama Bear says, uh, if you want to, if you, if a woman makes more money, there's nothing wrong with the man staying at home. Okay, I heard that. So she is mine. Um, let me think. It says feisty one says, unfortunately, men are still paid disproportionately more than women. So if, if it is a financial issue, you may have to consider who can bring in the larger salary. Um, and uh, I go to Silent Blue because this little comment started to rack up. So I go to. Hey, um, you know. I'm going to push back on a bit on what, what, um, what Bahram said, and even a little bit on, on what, on what shy lady said. Um, and I guess it all depends upon how you were raised. I was raised to be independent. I, you know, it was just me and my sister, mom, dad, and my father, you know, he wanted to make sure, as he always said, I want my girls to be independent. I want them to know that they don't need a man to you know, do everything. And because of that, you know, uh, I think I mentioned before when I was 16, um, one of my Christmas gifts was a tool toolkit and I, and I still have it. Um, I fix more things around this household than my husband does. There are some things that my husband just does not know how, how to do, you know, you know, which is fine, you know, but, um, you know, I'm not going to be that person who, um, you know, if I'm on the side of, of, of the road and I get a flat, I know how to change a tire, you know? Um, and I think that women, you know, what is a traditional household first? You know, is it a traditional household that a man said? Because way back during the time of, you know, uh, Jesus and Adam and Eve, that, that the woman was told that she's gonna stay home? So that became the 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 the, the traditional ha household. What 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 if it was flipped? What if it was always the man? You know, um, women. We are some powerful people. We are, you know, to me, we are stronger than men. And when women have children, every woman cannot breastfeed. Every woman should not be expected to. Um, there are some women who. Um, you know, for whatever reason, they cannot stay home that, that, that first year. Um, I, I, when my son was born, he was in daycare up until he was two, up until the time that, you know, I was just sick and tired of, of, of my job. And from the time that my son was two and a half on, I have not worked in a traditional job. I've always work for myself. I've always been able to have my own business and work for, for myself. So that did benefit my uh, son, you know, but at the same time, it's like, if I was going somewhere, my husband had to, to, to stay home. And I think people put too much emphasis on a child needs a mother, a child needs a mother, a child needs, needs a mother. Yes, a child does need a mother, but that father is also there. That father is also, you know, a big part. And I find that, and I see it with, with, with my own son. The first one that kids call when there's an issue is they call mom, 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 mom. And are we alienating dads because we're always there? I mean, dads need to also be a part of, of the home. And I think being a, a stay at home dad, I think that is awesome. Whether you're making the most money, even if that child was just born, whatever, and if that child is not breastfeeding, or even if they are, and if dad is the one who is taking care of that newborn as opposed to mom, I don't see anything wrong. Absolutely. And um, <laughs> I definitely want to read some comments after that. So I'll before I pass the mic, I'm going to let Woody Bush, since we're kind of at the beginning of the, of the comments, I'm going to let you comment right before I go to Bob. Um, but it says uh, not always true, and just because it's illegal doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Culturally, we've been conditioned to uh, not to talk about pay with others, and now that we are talking to others about pay, we are seeing discrepancies in pay. Okay, got you. That was uh, 
uh, Renee, because uh, I always mess up her, her stage name. Um, speaking in reference to uh, the, dispor- the disproportionate pay levels that was commented earlier. But a GP man has an interesting, interesting comment. You can only be a feminist in a first world country. Woo. I could teach my son, Mama Bear says, I could teach my son to work hard and still learn and uh, and still learn how to cook. Uh, well, I think I get what she's saying with that. But uh, Woody Bush, you can unmute yourself and uh, what do you? Hey guys, um, I just have a different experience or perspective to offer. Um, I'm I'm self-employed. I've got a one and a half year old daughter. Um, and the last year and a half has been really slow for me with COVID stuff going on and everything. Um, my wife's a, a Red Seal cabinet maker and daycare where we live is next to impossible to get into. Um, we were, we've been on waiting lists for every daycare since we found out she was pregnant and we've only got into one for one day a week, basically. So, um, the last, I just started a new job March 1st, but before that, the last eight months, I've basically been a stay at home dad because she can make more money and pay the bills than I was able to at the time. And we didn't have any other options. Somebody has to watch the kid, right? And daycare wasn't available. So I, I feel blessed for the time that I've got to spend with my daughter. And it started a, a different relationship with her than most fathers get to experience, I think. but. It's all about what you're dealing with, right? So, as a man, though, I don't know how, how much of an ego you or pride you have. How does it, does it feel any kind of way you have to play that? I work. You're cutting out a little bit. I don't know if I'm in your pocket or. No, no, sorry. It's just. Um, it's... Yeah, it's like. Yeah, no, I, I feel blessed. Okay, okay, feel, Woody, like... Woody, we're hearing a lot of something, so I don't know where yeah. where, where, oh, where your mic something. is. Maybe. Is that any better there? Sorry. Yeah, I, we can hear okay, you. Let me go. It's clear now. Okay. Um, yeah. No, it's it. I like I said, it wasn't really a choice. It was what we had to do to get by. So you do what you got to do, and now I'm working again. So we've got some daycare um, taking care of her, but. How about this question? Does it make you feel better to work or not work? I ha- I have to work. <laughs> okay, you have to. I I, you. That, yeah, I, 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 it's not, well, it's just the way I am. I I, I work seven days a week you. now, and I, I work 12, 15 hours a day, but now I can provide a better life for my family too, right? And that feels right. good. So, so that means you sacrifice. That, that's that's we don't want to we'll often think about that. What are the sacrifices a man will have to do, especially if he's a, a, a ego driven or pride driven to some degree? You want to take care of your family. What are the, those? That's that's a huge sacrifice in some cases. So uh, we appreciate those comments, man. And we're going to move on to Ba Ba here. Um. So first of all, solid. I know you said you wanted to push back on on something. You know the things that I said, but I didn't hear anything. You know, I didn't say you have to, and that's the whole point of this. Like, I didn't say women have to have to stay home and men have to go to work or vice versa. And that's the difference between me and what the media are doing. And I know they're probably not saying you have to, but they're making it so that both parents have to go out and work to, to survive. We've, or, we've already heard from Shy Lady, from Katisha and Woody Bush there, who's you know, all said that it didn't, it wasn't worth their while. Um, you know, the, the money that they're making, like Woody Bush has to work seven days a week, you know, and, and Shy Lady, was it you that said that, you know, it, it wasn't worth your while after paying for all these childcare? And then we had Katisha who said she just couldn't possibly stay home because she needs to go out and work because that's the way the world is set up. And I, I say that one of the two parents should be able to stay home and the world shouldn't be so messed up that, you know, that that's what they did. I think when I was touching on the forties and fifties, because they realized that those, those eras after, after the war, there was probably the best couple of decades. And um, one parent was working and everyone was doing really well. And they realized, look, we're only getting tax from, from one of these humans from each, from each couple. Why don't we make it so that both, both women, both uh, parents have to go out and work 
and, and you know there was something that happened there that I need to go back and revise over but they, they made it so that 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 two parents had to go out to work and I think it's so sad because you know I I, I agree with you solid like all the things you mentioned about you know both parents being key to the child and the upbringing you're right but unfortunately we don't get that opportunity in most cases because we're having to slave away and work 40 50 60 hours to make things you know to make ends meet so um yeah i'm yeah i, I think that's uh i'll pass the mic oh okay right on can i can, I, re okay, can I respond yeah. to what i said okay. okay um you know by you know i'm going to say this because it irks me so much every time you bring in the media Okay, and again, the media was not around, you know, a thousand years ago. This this whole thing with with women being home and stuff, the, the media wasn't there, you know. But you know, times do change, prices go up, um, and the media is not making prices go up or 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 or, or anything, um, you know. So, um, when you look at you know, and, and, then, and then you said, you know, right after, right after the war, everyone was, was doing well. Everyone was not doing, doing well. There were a lot of people who were poor. There were a lot of people who did not have the opportunity to do well. And you have, you have groups of people who always had to have two people working. You know, whether it's one person being the butler, the other one's the maid. But two of those households, there's always have been a situation where two people had to work. You know, so um, I don't know, um, I, you know, so I don't know. That's 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 what I have to say. And chill, you may want to take a look at what Ray said. I'm sorry, what Mama Bear said is, does that include uh, or, I'm sorry, what if you have um, two fathers? So that may be something that you may want to uh, touch on. OK, yeah, that is interesting. What if you have two fathers? I don't that's that's the most untraditional <laughs> household. So I, uh, so, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that, but I want to make sure Charlotte gets the last, uh, thoughts on what she wants to, uh, say about this. Um, <clears throat> I still think, you know, I agree with my, my solid sister, um, that I don't think it's anything wrong with, a, um, a man staying at home and being a stay at home dad. I, you know, sometimes it's necessary. There's, there's sometimes, women are going to be making way more than the husband. Somebody, somebody's got to be there, you know, for the kids, especially when they're really, really young. Um, and like I said, daycare, um, isn't always the answer. But so, so you, that, mm -hmm. go ahead. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. Uh, so you don't mind being with, a um, a, like, a Katisha, Katisha, ah, if I'm messing up your name, I'm so sorry. Katisha said that she Kat doesn't like Katisha. being with a, like a Katisha said, that she doesn't like being with a um a docile man or like maybe a, a man that's not out there making money you know what i mean so so can you deal with that type of personality or you that know, situation I, i'll i'll use myself and i'm gonna pose that to everybody I, i'm gonna use myself as an example um if i was making more money than my husband i wouldn't mind him I mean, our kids are grown, but if if if, if, our, if our kids were younger, because he's the type of person, he he got to be doing something. He cannot just sit at home, or he's got to be even if working from home, he's going to be doing something. Uh, it may be later on at night or something, but he's the kind of person that's got to be doing something, feeling that um, he's putting effort towards something. So that's just, just the kind of man he is. I mean, he would be there for the kids, but I know he's the type that say, you know what? I'm gonna do something on the side. I'm gonna do something related to computers. I'm gonna do something, you know, I can do from home or something. He's just one of those kind of people. So gotcha, I, gotcha. I, I definitely, if, if it was reversed, I would have no problem because he's a great dad. He's a great dad. Okay. So I have That's, no problem if it was if it was reversed. So why do y'all think that the bread, the women are becoming the breadwinners like that? What is what is what is being infused in our society to where the roles are being reversed? I'm gonna pose it. Uh, I think I guess we'll go to um. Fe 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 Feisty one just popped in. Out before we move on, I'll let you get your initial comments, and you can answer that question before we go to uh, Solid Blue. Uh, well, Solid Blue just came, so it'd be Ba. Am I right, Solid Blue, or is it, is it back to you? 
however you want to run your show. Roger that. Roger that. We'll go. We go. To, well, you started off first, so I'll go to you first, and then to be Bob. Okay, because you were responding to Bob initially, so that's why you were um uh just just spoke. So that's fine. So feisty one. We'll go to feisty one, crucible, and then we'll go to silence. All right. Okay. Um, hey guys, I don't think there's, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a non-traditional family, whether it's two, two men, two women, a, a man and a woman, it doesn't matter. I think it depends on your family's financial situation as to who should work or whether both should work or one should work. I believe Children are better off if there is a parent in the home for a lot of reasons, safety reasons. When I was raising my children, um, my husband and I, because we were incredibly uncomfortable, we would pop in at various times of the day. And <laughs> my husband popped home once and the gal that was watching our children um, had condoms all over the place. And my husband's like, you know, what the hell's going on? And so... It just left, um, you know, obviously we fired her, but the problem is we were incredibly uncomfortable leaving our children with just anybody. And so in a scenario like that, I think it, you know, you have that level of comfort if it's somebody that's part of your family. Now, in terms of um, finances, I think whoever can make the most money, if it's going to be a one working family, one person working in the family, it should be whoever can make the most money. And unfortunately, I stand by uh, my thought that women are still traditionally not compensated for doing the same job, having the same education as a man. Men in America are compensated more. Now, there has been a change, too, in terms of some women, you know, there's been a swing in recent years for, you know, a lot of reasons, because you got the Me Too movement and some other things that have created, I think, um, the pendulum is swinging, right? And so I think you're seeing some things that you haven't seen previously. Um, I, someone, someone mentioned in the chat women being sexually you know, you know, um, accosted at work or whatever. Those things are, were very real for women and they still are today, but probably not as prevalent today. Um, but in terms of who can make the most money, every able body in the household can get up and go get a job. So whoever can make the most should go get a job, make the money, bring it home and take care of your family. That's it. Okay, so so you don't necessarily believe in a traditional household. You think both parents need to be working, and and um, definitely, well, you know, both can work. I'm saying? not saying they should, because okay. if you make enough money where only one parent needs to work, I'm an advocate of staying home with your kids, because I think that's how you get the kids to have the solid foundation and have your values, and hopefully your values are solid. A loving values. So I think that's how you instill the values in your children. If you, if one of you can stay home, um, I'm just saying there's nothing wrong and no judgment for a two parent household where they both parents have to work. You do what you have to do to, to take care of your family. And you also saying that it doesn't matter which one stays at home. You just, no, it's whoever makes the all. most money. Now that, that poses another question. Mom can, yeah. That poses another question. I would I would say that hey I would think the most nurturing understanding teaching person should stay at home because I think money money can convolute things. What, what, what do you say about that? Well, I'm sort of operating under the assumption that um, you and your spouse or you and your partner are equally yoked, and so you're both going to care for your kids. Um, so I think it shouldn't matter. Now, yes, there's some people who are who are kid people, but I would think if you made a decision to have a kid with somebody, you're both equally yoked in that regard. So again, from my perspective, it doesn't matter whether the man stays home or the woman. Okay. Okay. Well, well, thank you for the thoughts. I'm going to pass the mic to Crucible. Crucible, man. Hey, Chill. How are you? What's up? Um, yeah, there's a couple things here. Um, I'm going to take the first one first, um, you know, non-traditional households. There was a time that I'm, I'm ashamed to admit I would have taken a dim view of a man staying home. And I'm going back now 30 or 40 years. This wasn't like a couple of years ago. And things were just a lot more traditional back then. And men staying home, it was very, very unusual. And I think it was 
it was typical of a lot of non-traditional, unconventional, and atypical arrangements where people don't understand them. So their first reaction is to maybe criticize or, or to um, stigmatize. And I think that went on a lot. But um, I think that subsided quite a bit with, with – um, um, you know, um, w- women emerging in the workforce and uh, needing two two income households. I'm not even sure it's a question anymore. Although I have a, a nephew who is a stay at home father. His wife is a uh, known as a nursing practice, a dental practice, I should say, and does extremely well. But most people that I know are two income households. Now, to Will's other question, um, why do men or boys seem to be maybe falling behind a little bit. And I don't know if that's exactly how he posed it, but yeah. I, I, yeah, I think there's been a crisis of boys um, and young men in this country for decades now. I think women have really emerged in the workforce. Their degrees are in different areas. I just saw something the other day that I believe during the period of 2011 to 2017, the high school graduation rate for women in California was almost 90%. It was barely 80% for boys. And I think when you look at college um, entrance um, data, fewer and fewer men are going to college. And if you're going to go the HVAC route or become a, a plumber or something like that, there's nothing in the world wrong with that. Those are very, very well-paying jobs, but they don't seem to be gravitating to those either. They seem to be falling through the cracks. So uh, to, to Will's question, why is that? There's a bunch of different reasons. I'm not a sociologist, but I do know that there has been a serious crisis of, of young men and boys. Women, uh, I don't believe, are taking advantage of it at all. They're simply filling a void. They have different skill sets. They have different levels of empathy. They fill a different niche in the workforce that men don't necessarily these days, as far as what's required in a skill set, in, in, in a job, they may not be measuring up as well as women. But there's a bunch of different reasons. But I think the crisis is real. Hey, I, I, I can agree to a lot of extent. I do think also, just to add to that, I think it's just the, the idea of being a nurse or a teacher or – you know, um, some of these professions that women will do that are they are in that men just that, you know, there's not quote unquote men jobs. So, you know, they're not going to be in, 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 in doing things in that. And that's awesome. Awesome thought process. I want to uh, go to the chat really quickly. Renee says more women are getting bachelors than men now. Culture is changing. Less people are one children. The average age of women having their first child is now 30 years old. That's interesting. Mama Bear says I wouldn't leave my son with no one took me a while uh, to even have my mom look after him and that that's that's a thought process in this whole thing like some people shun at moms not being at home especially for their children initially you know that that's a just 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 that out thing um in this i don't i and i can't speak to the motherly instinct or the mothering na- nature i i can only listen when it comes to that um when they also says there's also more women in the workforce than men uh at the at the moment for the first time in history uh, GP man says just more women are in cottage, but the vast majority go for non STEM degrees. That means non uh, science, technology, or you know, you know, the word, um, science and technology degrees, uh, which is interesting. Which is or, <laughs> that might be another reason for that, I believe. Um, the number of Renee says the number of men versus women in those fields are closing in, um, on 50 50. I think she referencing the uh, science. Ec- technology fields also being one who works in a male dominated field i can get uncomfortable just like in school it can get uncomfortable okay got you and so we're gonna we're gonna go and move on to solid blue who's been waiting patient well thank you jill um you know um when you look at women again i go back to that women are expected to be the traditional stay at home mom, whatever. And, you know, that's just, you know, not the case. And to me, it hasn't been probably since World War II, after women were pretty much, you know, told to join the workforce, because, you know, the men were, um, were out fighting the war. But then when the, you know, men came home, um, a lot of women wanted to stay at the factory working, whatever, but they were literally like told to leave. Okay. So, okay. You are not wanted anymore. Go, you know? So to me, it's like, you know, 
you 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 use us when you want us, but then when you don't want us. And uh, I mean, I worked at a telecom place where it was very much a man's um, a uh, a a what do you call it boys club, and um, it was very obvious. And you know, you had men there who would call women who were higher up, who were directors or or or, or VPs. They were called the, you know, the B word, you know, but what were you, you know, so, you know, just, just the way women are, are treated, you know, you can say all you want to about how great you think women are and blah, 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 blah. But in the end, how do you treat them? Whether they're a stay at home mom or whether they are in the workforce and, and just like Ray, Ray said, you know, just for she's in, she's in architecture, why are there not more women? Why, why is it that, you know, women, you know, even now, they still have to put up with um, sexist remarks. Um, you know, if, if, if you're a uh, cop, you have other cops that are saying, you know, you need to go home and take care of the baby, whatever. Really? Why don't you go home and take care of the baby? So I just think that when you say a traditional house household, that was something that was assigned to women by men. And until things change, and I don't think they ever will, women will always make less than men. Men will always make some comment. They'll always make some sexist remark because that's just what they do. That's, that's what men, men do, you know, and it's wrong. But if you call them out oh. on it, you know, it's like, oh, well, whatever. But women are expected to stay home and take care of uh, of a baby. OK, so that so you you think that just in general, believing in the traditional household is wrong for men, men like so by in general, is that just wrong in general? Well, no, I, I'm not saying that. I, I guess what my problem is, again, I come back to where did that term traditional household come from? Who was the one? who came up with their traditional household, who was the one who said that, you know, that, that women should, should stay, stay home. It, it, I mean, it was man, you know, so there's nothing wrong with it, but at the same time, it's like, don't, don't, you know, put me down because I choose to um, go to work as opposed to stay, um, um, stay, staying home. Don't, don't, you know, make me out to be a bad parent or a bad mom because I choose to go to work or because I, you know, you know, I um, now want to go and become a lawyer or a doctor or even if I just wanted to stay home or, or even if I just wanted to be the garbage man. Don't put put me down because that's what I choose to do. And what I find is a lot of women, they go through their whole lives staying at home taking care of children that they miss out on their own lives. The man is usually the one who is able to have the life that they want, have the job that they want. And you have a lot of women who they will suffer in silence and they'll, they'll well, wait until the, the kids are grown. And, and, and then when the kids are grown, mom, can you take care of my baby? You know, because then they're taking care of the grandkids. You have a lot of women who have missed out on a lot because they were told that you're, a, you're to be a traditional wife, stay home and just take care of, of the kids. I wonder how many women right now, if they could tell, tell, tell the truth without having a, a husband or a family member or something, you know, telling them that, that, that they are wrong, actually wish that they could have done a lot of things that they couldn't do because they were staying home, taking care, care, care of kids. And that's not to say that they don't love their children, but they also have a life okay roger that um there were some statistics someone put out here and the gp man says 1.6 trillion student loan debt in america and women hold 70 percent of the huge debt of, and most likely won't pay that back because of the degree the degrees they chose meaning that like you have certain degrees that are forget like if you're a nurse or a teacher you if you you know or just in general a lot of times if you have a fannie mae loan or public school loan you you can get it forgave at it's and be forgiven after 10 years or if you become a nurse or a doctor some people will forgive you um and, 
and and that that's that's a real thing. But I that's school's over. That's a whole other you know subject. School is overpriced and grossly overpriced anyway. You could pay for somebody to educate somebody. That's that's ridiculous. That's like paying for air for me or water. You know that's just ridiculous. Um, but I guess you could just go self educate yourself. The problem is you can't get a job. You can't get yourself a degree and validity. Um, so uh, what is it? Um, so we're gonna go over to Ba Ba. All right. Um, there's a lot to unpack there from Solid, and I'm, I'm actually really quite shocked at, <laughs> at some of the things you said. Um, I would say that your last speech there is probably the, I don't know, I'm just shocked. Like your comment about uh, that's what men do, I think that's quite unfair. I think if it had been the other way around and a man had come on the panel and said that that's what women do, I think you would have pushed back on that. So I kind of have to push back on that. Um, I mean, I, I didn't really want to talk about that kind of stuff because I think it's a different topic. Um, so I'll kind of, I'll jump over to like the, the traditional word that you kind of have a, you have a gripe with. So again, this is where I said at the start of the show, when I was given my opinion, there are better ways of wording it. And when that traditional word gets brought up in today's society, a lot of people are turned off by it because of the progress and the progressives in the world, the, the, the politics stuff. And, you know, the traditional usually also is linked with religious and, you know, there's a lot of people against religion in today's world. Um, but again, it's just a better way of wording it. Like, again, I'm listening to everyone and nobody disagrees with anything I say. Every, you know, Shy Lady came on the last time she spoke and the first word says, I have to agree with Solid, as if it was like me and Solid were disagreeing with each other. I still don't see that because Shy Lady then went on and agreed with me. It's just the way you word it. And, and I am not saying I think the woman should stay home and the man should go to work. Or and I'm so I'm not also saying I I you know I'm not telling I'm just saying that that is the best way in my opinion, and if you don't want to do that, then that's fine. It's up to you. It's your life. But ultimately, I do believe that the best way is for at least one parent to stay at home, which everyone has agreed with. And I think feisty uh, feisty one when she came on, she described it way better than I could. If if one parent can make enough to keep you know one parent at home looking after the kids cooking the meals because we haven't even you know it's all about the kids but I'm, I'm talking about like just looking after the house looking after you know the administrate like the bills um cl house cleaning cooking meals even you know how, how many arguments are caused over like what what we're having for tea tonight oh i don't know you pick no you pick oh let's just you know arguments and i'm saying that generally one parent staying at home looking after the house and all that goes with it is the best and if that's the man that's perfect. And if it's a woman, perfect. Uh, there's, there's no disagreement here. So, um, and, I, and I also want to touch upon the question that Will asked. It was, um, you know, I think it was something along the lines of why do you think that, you know, women are more in the workforce now and and the, and a crucible, crucible man, he, he described it very well. And what I'll ask is, you know, and I'll, and I'll pass the mic after this question. And I know you hate when I bring up the media, but can I ask everyone before they say their next uh, round of, of, of things, just a yes or, or what you believe it is, why do you think that's happening? Why do you think there is a sudden change that women are now no longer having kids until they're 30? The, that one, you know, Re Bexy, I hope I'm saying that right, her comment there, more women are getting bachelors than men now. Culture is changing, less people are wanting children the average age of women having their first child now is 30 years old. Kind of focus on the, the women having their first child at 30 years old, because I think that's easier to get into your minds. Well, it is for me. Why do you think that's happening? Because I know, but I don't, obviously I'm not allowed to say, <laughs> it's not that I'm not allowed to say it, but you know you know what I think it is. People like AOC saying it's, it's uh, what is it, selfish to have children, things like that. It's the media, it's the government, it's peer pressure, it's, polls, it's public opinion, it's it's all that stuff. And that's what I mean. Every time I'm touching on these subjects, it's those things that are guiding you in your life's decisions, whether it's subconsciously or consciously. You don't do things unless it's like, you know, 90% of the things we do in life is because we our, our opinions aren't our own. We're kind of being brainwashed or peer pressured into things. And uh, yeah, that's all. 
Okay, cool. So what I do want to say uh, really quickly is uh, I, I don't I think I don't I think having a traditional household doesn't mean you don't respect. I mean, it can if you're just a chauvinist, but the to say you know because there's a lot of religious uh foundation in that um i don't necessarily agree with silent when she says that it comes from the man i well then this the well i guess if the man created the religion but that's it's deeply based in religion and to some degree if a if a man appreciates the, the i think the natural setup of how things are per that religion or whatever you know the traditional household he understands that that woman staying home would be just as much or more important than um, any any place is invaluable. I can make that money, but she's doing the real work. A man would understand that, um, and vice versa. You know, even you know what I'm saying. So, uh, I just wanted to say that really quickly. Uh, I know I got to get Charlotte has been waiting super patiently, y'all. So I need to make I got to get her in. So so you. Um, <clears throat> it's been so much stuff. I, I'm trying to remember. Um. I was going to bounce off of what, what some things Ian has said. He has said a lot. Um, when he said that I agree with Solid and him, I agree with Solid with, with, to the to the uh, point that I don't see anything wrong with being a stay-at-home dad. Because like I said, there are some women out there who are doing uh, you know remarkably well in the work world. And with everything being so high these days, um, fuel and housing, if if that woman has the opportunity to make more than the husband, go for it, honey. Go all the way for it. Now, at the same time, I do believe there needs to be a parent at home for young young children, infants, and and toddlers, because I think one parent has to be at home. And so, in, if if that's the dad, because the mom is the is killing it out there, then then let it be the dad. I, I you know I don't, I don't I don't really you know see anything wrong with that. But I do think that, agreeing with Ian, I do believe that there should be a parent there and the kid not always in daycare. I, I think it's such a disadvantage to have a young child in daycare. They don't get the same type of nur nurturing that maybe um, a parent would, would give that child. I just, uh, you know, I've, I've seen people in my own family who struggle with uh, daycare. I have a, a family member who had a day, who had a, 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 a sort of like a nanny situation. And that wasn't even the best because um, like a feisty woman said, you know, you, you come home and you, you see things that, that are not right. And that's in your own home. So that's just my take on it. And so how do you feel about the, uh, what do you, why do you think the, uh, the women, the roles are kind of slightly changing the pendulum is, you know, even and out or switching. I With think that, um, yeah, I, you know, I actually read an article, it may have been a year ago, and it was written by a, a white journalist. And I think this article was something about white white men are in trouble, or it was something like that. And then I'm like, what is he talking about? So I decided to read the article, and it was about white men are not going to co college anymore. Um, and more and more of them are are not, um, he, he, had a, he had a take on it that it's, it's crucial to the work to the workforce that that they that they do not not go so i can't remember the journalist but i remember reading that article and i was thinking to myself well the, a lot of a lot of non-white men are, are not going to college and so i think that that's why women are starting to um be dominant and and major in some fields in, in the work world because men are not going to college in numbers like like women are so i think that's why a lot of the roles have reversed women are out there mm. you know and, and, and some women are some women are not i know someone mentioned about the the debt that women are in, um acquiring because of you know degrees and advanced degrees but there's some women out there that are in management and on high levels they're in c-suites they're uh senior level managers they're in tech fields medicine and all of that and and they're doing well and that's why yeah, a lot but, of a lot of men are not not um, um, uh, working like women are because uh, they're, they're going for it. I, I completely agree to to a huge extent on that. But I, um, I think when the um, I think it was Class One Pro was also mentioned that a lot of times those uh, are, are not science and and uh, technology related. And he also mentioned that uh, that, that a lot of them not going to even pay the the debt back. So 
True. That, that will definitely that, that will definitely put you above, you know. So that that goes in line with what you're saying as well. So you know, if I, I don't have to pay that debt, but I'm making I'm going to college, making this money. Then the, yeah. I, I want to just make this point. I don't want to take over the conversation. When I was growing up, you know, seventies, um, late sixties, seventies, a lot of women were teachers, but that has shifted. You know, a lot of people that I knew that were professional, they were teachers. But now that has shifted. They're they're um, they're in all kinds of industries. So that's another thing that has contributed toward um, women now starting to dominate the the, the work world. Ah, got you. Yeah, I, I, that's that's a good take. Um, I want to go and I, I want to ask this. Uh, we kind of went around about the subject initially, but I want to throw a little a little monkey wrench into it now. If if you're okay with your husband being at home, uh, or or you just have that idea and he's at home, and you get a divorce, right? Now, are you okay with him receiving child support in lieu of your divorce? How do you feel about that? I want to go feisty one, and you can also comment on whatever, even the father the father untraditional relationships. But I'm gonna go to feisty one on this one. And uh, what do you think about? Wow. Okay. Um frankly, I think if traditionally he has been a stay at home dad, and this is just the circumstances, um, okay, he gets child support if he is the pri- if he is the custodial parent. It, well, or, well, so well, you're well, saying why wouldn't he, you're, why wouldn't he you're be saying, at this point? Uh, or like well, even alimony, alimony and child support. Okay, uh, so you're saying that. <laughs> you, you have to work. You know, I, he, doesn't, he doesn't have any way. He would be the custodial parent. Yeah, period. no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I get it. I just, you, yes, there's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with that. If you have had, I just think the reason I'm laughing is because most relationships I know that end that way, and they're not many where the female's paying support, but the ones that I know of that are that way are far more contentious. So it's not as clean cut as saying, yes, pay him child support or pay him alimony. Um, one circumstance I can think of, which is why my view is a little tainted or why I'm hesitant to answer, um, is the guy, it, it was, the ro- roles were reversed. He was um, the primary breadwinner. They were married. They got divorced. She took on a job instead of relying on, Um, alimony and child support. And he quit his job and asked for, and he had a high paying job. So a little different, but no, if that's the circumstance and it's like just legit where he lost his job or he was always a stay at home dad, then yeah, pay it. If it, you know, pay it. I don't, I don't see oh, anything no, wrong. I got you. I got you. So I want to read something real quick because I just that prompted me to ask that question because I I read something about Kelly Clarkson. Obviously, this is an extreme scenario because it's Kelly Clarkson, but she pays in alimony something like forty five thousand dollars a month until mm-hmm. like two twenty twenty four, and then she also pays like I don't know some another like a one point three million up front and then. Oh, it's uh, I'm sorry. It's one hundred fifteen thousand monthly support till January thirty first, twenty twenty four. A one time payment of one point million dollars, uh, and also forty five thousand dollars in child support. Uh, forty five thousand six hundred one dollars per month, to be exact. So, <laughs> it's just those stats are kind of deafening and the crucible, man. You definitely or feisty one if you have something else to say about that. I just want to add when you're talking about when you're talking about people with her kind of money, um, I think then it becomes an issue of keeping him in the lifestyle that he's grown accustomed to while they were married. Um, And so although those numbers are surprising, like they're they're startling for the average um, working class peeps. But that's just, you know, I don't know. I, I guess I'm not startled by those numbers because you got to look at the kind of income she's bringing in. And if he got accustomed to that kind of lifestyle, then it is what it is. Roger that. Um, I want to say something. Um, GP man says that at chill wheel, there are no strong and independent women in divorce courts. Oh my Lord. You trying to get me (laughs) pilted up here by rocks, ain't you? But, 
Thanks. Uh, I just wanted to bring that out there. Um, truth. I agree with Feisty. You know, the rules are the rules and they shouldn't change because the roles are reversed. But, you know, I, I'm just looking at this anecdotally, but I have looked at some data and some t statistics and, and it's mostly been the last few years. My anecdotal sense is that there is less of an adversarial um, acrimonious relationship between husbands and wives and f mothers and fathers these days than there maybe traditionally has been. If you want to go back just a couple of years, you could attribute some of it to the pandemic because I believe the divorce rate has been declining for some time now, but it really dropped precipitously over the past couple of years. And anecdotal data suggests that people appreciate their, their spouse more because of the pandemic and there's just a closer family unit. But I get the sense these days, and again, I'm looking at it from 40,000 feet, that there's a more collaborative relationship between men and women and mothers and fathers these days than there typically has been. The lines have been blurred. I think it may have been a little painful for men at first, and there's sure, I'm sure there are pockets of them that are still not okay with it, and that probably will never change. But I believe that the needle has moved in the last 20 years. Is it perfect? No, of course not. But I believe that men and women through necessity, again, I, I believe the, the one income, if you have the luxury of only having one income, you are a very, very blessed family. That's probably two or 3% of the population. I don't have numbers in front of me, but that's probably a fair guess. Everybody else, you need two incomes. And so when there's two people working, the mother is not just the one taking kids to baseball practice or to dance lessons anymore. Those responsibilities have to be divided. So I, I think the shifting family unit and the amorphous nature of it these days has forced and dictated positive changes in the day-to-day -day relationship between mothers and fathers that I see it less adversarial and more collaborative, but that could just be my imagination. So are you saying that 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 is a positive thing that the man can receive child support in these situations? I do. I do. And, 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 and that's an interesting way of phrasing it, Will. But oddly enough, it, the way you put it there, yes, because I believe it empowers women. Oddly enough, they're the ones having to pay the alimony. So you may not find that to be that empowering, but it puts them on a level playing field. What's good for men is good for women. So in that sense, I believe the level, the playing field levels out and women should feel more equal in a negative way, unfortunately. But um, if they want to, if they, if the fail, if the levy, excuse me, if the playing field is truly going to be level, what's good for one rate, uh, excuse me, what's good for one gender is, is got to be good for the other gender. <laughs> I guarantee you there's a group of men somewhere in one room standing up, screaming and yelling at the top of their lungs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guarantee it. So, um, I just said, man, that's, man, that's awesome. That's, awesome uh information and th that's an awesome thought process into that so i think i believe who will be next will be so solid will be next right you know i'm sitting here um <laughs> i'm sitting here just kind of laughing um, just reading the comments and listening to everyone but um i think that one reason why women um you know i didn't get married until i was 35 i didn't you know have my son until i was 37 um, and again, going back to Ba, I have to say, because I was reading something that that um, Frankie commented on your AOC comment. I, I can't find it right now. But, you know, again, I was raised to be independent. OK, and that and I was born way before AOC, <laughs> you know, whatever. So um, um, we were raised to be independent. And my parents stress, both of my parents stress that. You have a career, you get yourself settled, you do the things that you want to do before you get married. And that's what I did for the most part. You know, and quick um, solid blue. Can I can I ask you who is AOC? Just I know who it is. Can you can you just give everybody is Alexandria uh uh um or or Casio Cortez. So I hope I pronounced her name well, correctly. What's her so, status, yeah. I should say? So, I mean, that's to be more Okay. Yes, um from the state of New, New York. You know, so um you know, so, you know, if you want to say, well, this person says this and this person says this, in that case, then you should tell, tell, tell my parents, well, you, well, they said that you did, did that and, you know, and, and, you know, they shouldn't have told you this or they should have, should have told you that. But again, that's how I was, was raised. And 
somewhat I'm raising my son the same way, you know, have a career, do the things that you want to do before you have a family. Because even at the age of 37, <laughs> when I had this child, my life changed. You put a baby in, in, in the mix and I only have one, you know, and your whole life changes and mainly for women. So I think a lot of women are holding off, you know, whatever. And yes, maybe, you know, like Janet Jackson, she didn't have a baby until she was 50, you know, whatever. Um, but I think a lot of women are, are waiting because they do want to have a life. They want that, that career. You know, you have women who, who um, get, get married and the husband says, well, you stay home and you support me and then it'll be your turn. But her turn never comes. So I think that a lot of women are choosing to say me first, family second. And I don't think there's anything wrong, wrong, wrong with that. So if people want to, you know, say, well, you know, damn, you know, you didn't have a baby until you, you, you were 37. Yeah. But I did a lot of things that I, that I wanted to do. I traveled a lot. I did a lot of things that I knew that I did not want to have a family with while I was doing now. You know, w once I had my family, yeah, we traveled and we and we did things, whatever. But I'm so happy of the choice that I I made. It was good for me, and I didn't need a politician or the media or anyone else telling me. And I'm glad that I was raised the the way that I was to be independent. So I'll pass the uh, mic. Absolutely. So the 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 answer is basically you you don't mind paying child support to that husband. That stays home if you were to separate uh no no i i would would not but i would say this i am you know you know my husband we've had our, our ups and downs and stuff but um i'm glad that i married a man who is not controlling who is not you better do this and you better do do that whatever because i never would have married him if he was like that we we would not be um married but if it meant that i had to pay pay, 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 pay child support yeah i would Absolutely. And GP, man, I, I, it's a lot of the comments are popping, so I can't read all of them. But I do know you took an exception with me uh, uh, speaking about the, the, the alimony and child support payments because you you threw out a statistic saying 95 percent of men pay alimony. But I, it just went along with the question further about untraditional households. If they broke up, you know, typically a woman would get you know, ch child support or alimony. And it was just, I was wondering how people felt about it being the same way. So it was just, it was not the blue. It, it wasn't, it wasn't. So uh, I'm going to go next to oh, Ba. Um, no, I'm just loving the conversation. I, I don't really have anything to say. Again, nobody has said anything that I, I disagree with. So I'm kind of, I, I better just pass the mic unless there's a question or something. <laughs> Uh, not uh, not a problem. Um, okay, so I'm sorry. What was the question? I was I was reading some of the comments. Uh, yeah, it is getting popping in the comments. Uh, so how do you feel about the men receiving child support? I mean, even if y'all, even if we 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 never even reached it. They, sometimes two people can have jobs as well, and the woman that she just makes more. It doesn't, he doesn't necessarily even have, have to be a stay home. You know, completely. Uh, uh, when it comes to, you know, child support or alimony, but in this reference is obviously is, is a traditional household. And um, mm -hmm. how do you feel about having to pay a man child support in in lieu of um divorce or something? I I think that is is fair. If she's making all the money, um, you know, like I said, you know, example, you know, I have a gynecologist who's um got a very successful practice, and if she had divorce or whatever and she had been making the money, then I think she she should pay him because he really wasn't working. So, and if he's going to take those kids and take care of them, then I definitely think there's nothing wrong with that. But so, again, it's like- So don't whole, nobody you, thinks mm -hmm. that the mom, mm -hmm. like that, uh, them like playing that fatherly, like I said, she's not going to be in the kid's life, but just being less active. No one thinks there's, there's a problem with that in, in general. I, I, I don't, because it depends on the woman. There are some women who are just um, not the stay-at-home type. 
there, there, there's some of them out there like that. They, they get bored and not that they don't love their kids, just like there's some fathers who just cannot be there like, like, like the mom would be. You know, there's just some people like that. It's just, it's, I think it's just their nature. I'm going to tell y'all right now, y'all playing these games, but some of y'all grandmamas and grandmamas, mamas is rolling in their grace right now. <laughs> they, so I, I, know, I know mine probably is. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Um, also, I had another question, but I don't, anybody, anybody else want to make some couple, couple comments before we move on? I don't, I don't know if they, if anybody missed something or it's some comments going on in the, in the section and in, in the chat section that I'm not privy to. So I don't know if something's going on in there that somebody needs to elaborate on as well. I'm leaving it open to this spot so I can go look exactly what topic that I wanted to go to next. I, I had something that I can't think of. I need to go reference. Okay. Will, are, are you saying that you're not able to see the comments? No, you should be able to I can see, see them, but I just don't want to go be proctoring and just going and reading and getting lost in the comments. Cause I, Okay, well, let me read, read read some of the comments while Jill is um is looking for his next question. Um, Class One Probe says, uh, "Okay, I'm sorry, crazy lady. Um, I pay child support for my daughter." Class One says, "AOC is a wild, <laughs> crazy politician. She has her place in our government. She's very far left. Yes, she is." Um, Ray says, uh, "GP man who made the laws." the courts enforced and who is the majority of judges. Uh, Crazy Lady was paying 200 bucks a month. Um, Ray says, GP man, look at income and who made the rules because majority majority of time is not women. Um, let's see. Shy Lady, women have never been money makers like they are now. Uh, Ray agrees with you, shy lady. Let me go up some more. Um, okay, GP man, you said please don't use micro arguments against macro arguments. Did you ever answer that? Because I've been reading the chat and so much has been going on. So um, let's see. Um, Dina Joe says, I would agree also with Rose will re reverse and suck it up and pay. And I'm uh, assuming you're referring to the child support. Um, shy lady, I always thought that those extravagant alimony payments, whether they're men or women on benefiting in, on the benefiting end are ridiculous. I'm sorry, but if I was making that kind of money, I I'd have a prenup. You know, I don't care if you're making a dollar a year at this point, I think everybody should have a, a prenup. Um, uh, and Ray also <laughs> agrees. I don't have that kind of money, but I'm 100% having whomever I marry sign a prenup. So, Chill, mm. it's back okay. to you. I got you. I got you. Thank you for that as well. So, what I also, I think I'd get, get, I didn't get anybody to clarify. Well, I did speak with someone about money. Is it just money that should make the that head of, because I knew it was going to come to this. And most people are saying, well, whoever makes the most should, should work. And the other partner is okay with them to stay at home. But to be honest, let's, let's be real. Like, you know, some people don't have patience to, to, I mean, sometimes it's the mom. She's just, and they, and women go through a lot postpartum. They go like, I mean, it's a lot. They have to go through after having a baby, which I would never understand, but I, I see it happen. I've seen it happen. And just traditionally they may, or just biologically, they just not might be a, you know, a super nurturing person. And um, a lot of times you may find that situation. And so do you think the money should always drive the person who should be the stay-at-home parent, and um, we went to what was Shalay? Was that Sally? I guess Sally. You can start off, and we'll go back in a row. Actually, I think uh, it was feisty because Shalay. I think you you, you spoke last. Okay, time. feisty. Actually, goes, okay, goes to feisty. feisty. Okay, I'm sorry. So I'm sorry. What was your question again? Jill? Okay, I think we I think we might have spoke about it, but as far as the nurturing or the the nurturing or the or the 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 money factor that should be took uh taken into consideration when picking the oh. parent that should stay home you know that was i think but we we talked about it so i didn't get everybody else's comments on that yeah you and i but talked you can about also it elaborate 
You can also label her <laughs> whatever, whatever else you want because it's your turn. Yeah, no, I, 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 you and I did talk about it. I said I thought um, that your part, you and your partner should be equally yoked. So, in terms of one being, you know, you know, that presumes that they're both equally capable and loving to their children, right? But, you know, I recognize I'm not naive. I recognize that there are some, you know, one parent can be better at it than the other. Um, no, so it's not necessarily tied to finances who can make the best money, the most money. It's also, I think it's also tied to drive. So who, who has the drive to get out there and push to, to, to do this thing to make, cause it, it is about making a future for your family. And in some instances is about creating generation, generational wealth, right? So who has that drive? Who has that initiative? Um, and so, I kind of liken it to budgeting is one better than the other. The person who's the best at budgeting should be the person who's, who's managing that. So if there's a person who has more drive and all of that, then, you know, likely you they that. should be the one. I'm glad you said that. So what if you're the mom and you're at home and you have the more drive, you have the intelligence, you have the wherewithal to really be the one in the workforce, but you make less money. Your, your 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 husband may be just a construction worker, and by default, he's moved up the ranks and he's making eighty thousand dollars or electrician. But you may be the one in the corporate world, the big boss woman, that has the potential to make more in the longer run. You know, um, so but you. I make think less. those are things that I I think those are things that you have to strategize with each other about because. Again, you know, there's so many things I can say about that. Construction workers can make great money, but sometimes their work is seasonal. Sometimes they, you know, they're um, subjected to to accidents where they get injured. I mean, there's so many things that that can come well, into play just with in that. Case that. They're making more, whatever job it would make. I mean, just you know, that's plug no, in but a doctor, I, I guess, lawyer, whatever job. But just if he makes more money, but you just mentioned driven. Who's the most driven? He may yeah. just be complacent in this in this spot. If you want to. Make general, uh, so then it may work, be right? it may be that female then going out if she's the most driven and she has the initiative and she's pushing to make a better life for the family then yeah I don't see any I I don't see anything wrong with making that decision as a couple though because I would presume that's something that you guys are gonna talk through and and come to the conclusion who who can steer this ship. Got you. And so you'll be okay with making thirty thousand dollars less in a year if you feel like in the in the long run it'll be advantageous for everyone. I do think that there are times where you can take a step back in order to take three steps forward in a year. Yep, I would be okay. Cool, cool. but it, right, but well, again, it, it, that's presuming all th all things are in place, right? If you got a family right, that's struggling right. and you can't put food on the table, that might not be a smart decision, right? Yeah, well, so, yeah absolutely. Yeah, we, we're talking definitely things are, if things are in that situation or in place. Okay, mm -hmm. great comment. Uh, Chris I think it almost always comes down to money. I think Shy Lady typed something in the chat box and I, you know, couples can talk about the nurture and, and the, uh, the, the, who's got the better parenting skills. I mean, at the end of the day, it always comes down to money and you finesse the rest of it. You'll figure out a way, whether it's childcare or whether it's somebody working from home two days a week, you will figure out the child rearing part of it because I think a lot of parents rationalize. I know mine certainly did. When kids are really, really young, they don't remember very much later on in life. You know, they're very resilient. They put up with a lot of stuff. I mean, kids have come through some awful circumstances and turned out really well. So I think... I think when it's all said and done, like a lot of things in life, you kind of go back and forth and you wrestle with the long-term implications of your decisions, but you've got to consider the short-term as well. College is expensive. High school is expensive. Daycare is expensive. Medical is expensive. The list goes on and on and on. So I, I don't know if couples are, you know, would, are being honest necessarily when they say, well, we made the decision because you know, of this reason. I think money is always at the top of the list. And, and the other reasons kind of fill in behind it. But you know, like I said, kids are resilient. And I think parents make trade-offs and they figure, you know, they'll get through this. Um, you, you know, they're, they're, they're young right now. They won't remember a lot of this. And so I think there's trade-offs that get made. And I don't think there's any long-term harm to kids. I really don't. But I think when 
parents are having to make difficult decisions, it's almost impossible to put anything above money. It's just a, from a practical standpoint. Oh, that's that. I'm glad you said that because I, I felt like, you know, somebody had to come out and say, listen, here, I don't care about none of that. We're about to make this money. You hear me? Yep. So that's awesome. I heard that, bro. And, um, okay, so I guess next solid, solid, you would that. Um, I don't have, believe it or not, I don't have anything to say. I will wait <laughs> to hear <laughs> what someone else has to say. But I will say, I do want to say this. Um, thank you, uh, Frank, you for your pod beans. And thank you, everyone, for liking the show. And, Chill, I hope you've been paying attention because you've uh, gotten some love. Um, uh, people have been saying that, you, that you're doing a good job, and, and, and you are. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, that's flattering. And I'll just say thank you. My mama told me I need to start taking compliments better. So that's what I'm going to do. Listen to my mama now. <laughs> All right. Um, so bye. Bye. Yeah. Um, just to reiterate what I was saying at the start, is just, um, you know, I, I agree, you know, Feisty One's last comment was, you know, a lot of the the, the subject of money will be the determining factor if if, you know, a lot of people are struggling, living paycheck to paycheck, and that decision might be taken out of the hands. Um, you know, uh, I, I didn't want to go down the route of I know, I know in the chat we were talking a little bit about men earning more money than women and, and all that stuff, but you know, ultimately, you know, I can only speak for myself. And you know, if, if my wife and I were to get pregnant, you know, I earn double, if not more, than what my wife does. So the, the decision would, wouldn't be in our hands. I, I would clearly have to go to be the one that would go working. But I'm also saying that if, if it was the other way around and my wife earned double what I earned, that I would still then give her the option because I'm a gentleman. I wouldn't you know, say you have to go back to work after you've just carried my baby for <laughs> our baby for, for nine months and you know, no, no time for recuperation, just get straight back to work because we need that money. Like that, This is what this whole show, show is about. And... I found these shows difficult to navigate when I've when I've spoke to people in real life about them. It's all about the way you word it because ultimately, being a man and having these views, um, you know, a lot of women can fl- fire up at you, and it's the way that you put it across. But ultimately, like you know, what I've said multiple times on the show tonight is nobody here disagrees with me, and I don't disagree with anyone. There's nothing I've heard here tonight that I disagree with in regards to that. I think we all agree. Hopefully, well, I mean, you can all have your say again, but we all agree that it is the best thing for a parent to be at home for a kid because they're not being brought up by the state. They're not being thrown into daycare and things. We all should agree that. So that's first and foremost. Secondly, I know there is a lot of people, and I am one, who believes that the mother would be the best of the two uh, for, for certain reasons, for obvious reasons in some cases, and breastfeeding and things and i know listen I, we don't want to get into semantics and say like the breastfeeding um some people can't do that or you know the two uh, you know it might be you know two fathers or two mothers listen that that's all well and good and we have you know there, there's different instances that we can talk about but ultimately i believe that one parent should stay at home um, or but if they can and this is the thing the system is set up so that both parents have to go to work because it's unaffordable for most people to have to have one parent at home. So, you know, uh, I just wanted to clear that up and, you know, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm going to go to Sean. Oh, I don't have any comments. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I, I've been listening to everybody and I think that those thoughts are kind of down around my thought, but I, I was thinking, but for the most part, two family, two people need to work in the household. I mean, if you're blessed to have, you know, that situation, I've, ironically, I have been a breadwinner, you know, in most of the relationships I've been in, and they didn't have to work. And I, and I, and I know just as me being as a man, I feel like that's what I need to be doing. And some people think, shine on that, but it may be so embedded in me. Um, I don't believe a man should be just chilling out, sitting at home. But when you with the kids, I don't think that's what you're doing. You know, if you're if you're doing what you're supposed to do at home, uh, you're just not sitting around. You're probably homeschooling. You're teaching. You, you know, and those life lessons taught from your parents 
there's nothing better um, because you can at least know that, you know, between the mom and father, y'all on the same page. When you do leave it up to the state, like Byron says, often peer pressure or just different people with different, you know, alignments can be infused in your child and you be, you got to fight that, you know, oppose the stuff you already have to fight. You know, so it that it it can be beneficial in in, in general, like the traditional household. Would, it's always awesome, and I think I we tell ourselves that we can't. We gotta both people gotta work, but it's just I think that's a bunch of crock. I think we can figure it out, you know, and we can just do with less. But money is king, right? And you feel like everybody wants to create generational wealth, but I think generational wealth is also instilling an awesome. Uh, a lifestyle mentality spirit in your child and because they can go out at one point and then that and within 10 years you know 15 years and do for themselves and, and illuminate the world themselves so that's a take on it as well i mean you may have to sacrifice a while but there's no there's man there's no uh money allotted to raising a wonderful influential child you know, and 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 that's I going to be on both parents. Period. Period. You know, for me, so I uh, I would always in, you know encourage people to you know think a little bit into that as well. But at the end of the day, like Crucible said, you know, when it comes to that money, listen, we taking that money. But um, it can be detrimental on a on a on a generational basis as well, especially if you're trying to break generational curses. We um tend to get fixated on one thing and uh can overcome uh certain habits or just ways and and others you know especially with children you know we got to start raising i really think we we were not raising our children anymore uh media social media and everything is all is so much an influence already we got to be involved and with me i i went to court this week uh for my daughter i've been going to court for i don't know I'm open up a little bit for for the past years just to be in my daughter's life, right? So you know it's always hard to you know hear like when people are like ah I'd rather not be around my you know just give up that parently duty. Now, I'm not saying people who work do right because I got you got to work, but it's always I always like the fact that you know having my daughter and being able to raise her like if, if I could just have my daughter, it'd have been awesome. But you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta work with what you got. She's still awesome, you know, as as heck. She's beautiful, and so I, I'm, and, and you know, it's fatherly duties never end, right? And um, she's 16, and I'll be probably there until the day I, you know, go away. But you know, and you can learn from kids as well. So at this point, she's growing up, and she can teach me just as much as I teach her, and she has. Um, but if anybody else want to make any other comments, let me know right now. Because we don't have to go the whole two hours, but I do want to let everybody get their their um chime in, and I'm sorry if I didn't pay attention to the the uh, comments recently. Um, can I can I just make a comment um uh, before you pass the mic on? Um, if we can start wrapping it up, because I know people are going to want to say what they want to say, and then right, um, right. I do That's... have some comments that I also want to make. Okay, yeah, so it would be I guess in line would be feisty one. Um, no, I think you covered everything. I'm good. Thank you for a great show, Jill. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Crystal. Excellent show, Will. You did a terrific job. The topic was, was right on point. Um, love the, the challenging comments and, 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 and different viewpoints. Um, you know, I, I think in, in the end, every family has to do, and I'm stating the obvious, I know, um, has to do what's best for them. I, I think non-traditional is here to stay. And I think if you've got two loving parents uh, in a stable household, you can overcome anything. Um, but any, again, great topic and excellent job today, Will. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, and we're going to, uh, well, you want to, I'm going to save Silent for last because she's going to close out the show. So I'll just go to Bob. Yeah, well, great, great hosting skills. I've loved the show, loved the topic. Um, this one could 
go on and on. I know it could. I know we could branch off into certain other topics. Um, so maybe you know we'll revisit this one. Um, we're certainly I've t- I've been texting Solid Blue on the side saying that this one needs to be added to to friendly differences because again the, these topics are you know they can get heated and thankfully it didn't get too heated tonight. Um, and you know, thankfully, I I put myself over in a way that I wasn't met with with uh, you know. Because listen, I, I I'm big enough and, and ugly enough to to you know defend myself and things. But ultimately, when you talk about things like this, it, it it's all it can be triggering for for people, and that's why it's it's good to be able to navigate your your feelings and opinions in the right way. And unfortunately, I'm not the best at doing that, so <laughs> you have to bear with me. But it's been a really great show. I, lo- I loved it. And Chell, you've been a great host. Um, so well done, bud. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I, everybody, thank you for the kind words. You didn't have to. <laughs> but th- thank you very much. And aside, shy lady. You, you- I just want to say, my brother, you did fantastic. It was a great topic. I loved it. And uh, it definitely had us discussing the different roles because our society is changing. It is definitely changing. So it was a great topic and I appreciate it being a part of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you as well. And um, it was nice hearing from everybody. Nice hearing and everybody's thoughts. And I'm glad y'all were um, engaged and participating. That's always awesome. Tuttle's You just muted yourself. I got a, I had to get a call, but Solid Blue, you can go ahead and close it out. Okay. Um, first of all, Will, you did a great job. I'm so glad that, you know, you took me up on my offer to host. Um, you are more than welcome to come back. So this is for you. So give me some cheering there. So... I very rarely use my audio effects, so I always forget I have them. So, um, but no, um, and thank you for everyone who showed up to um, uh, support Will. So thank you, and Will, it was a great topic that you chose. Um, Having said that, um, Bahram is going to be hosting next Thursday. Uh, I don't know what his topic is. I told him he has to give it to me by Sunday so I can post it. So, and I will be extending um, some invites out to other people because I do want people to have the opportunity they want to come on and host to host. Um, And Michael Key is going to be hosting in two weeks. He is the um, host of the Real Conservative Talk. So he will be on. And also um, today is my Thursday or my Friday. I will not be back until Monday for my show, for my turn to talk, but Balram and I will be on Saturday um, for Friendly Differences um, at 12 noon Pacific time. We will be on, um, we will be on, on video so you guys can see us and we will be streaming live on uh, YouTube and Twitch. So um, any questions or any one thing that you guys want to have, it worked out really well. Uh, last week, uh, people were able to um, type in their, their questions or comments, whatever, and people on the panel were able to answer, to answer them, them live. So hopefully you guys can come and, and listen to that. Um, so, Ba, if you want to make any comments or anything about your upcoming show or about Saturday's show, Friendly Differences? Yeah, um, I was just typing in the chat there that I've upgraded my Podbean account tonight, and I now uh, I'm currently uploading all my podcast episodes to Podbean. So if you guys want to, <laughs> if you guys want to listen to to my podcast, if you click on my name, you can now find my episodes there. Because before that, you only got four episodes with the free account. So I'm now uploading, and I am going to be starting my own show uh, in the next week or two. So, you know, I'll have a look around Podbean and see what kind of time slot is not taking us to not step on other people's shows. You know, I think that's quite, it's like an unwritten rule here so that we don't, you know, take over, uh, you know, take away listenership from from other podcasts. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Saturday. Be a great show, uh, Immigration. And, uh, you know, we, we, we purposely kept it to four people so that we could have two slots for any call in. So, Please look out for us on on YouTube, and and if you want to call in and ask a question or stay, you know, if, if 
if you've got plenty to say, then we'll, we'll allow you to do that. And also the guest on, 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 uh, on Saturday show for Friendly Differences is going to be Michael Key and Michael Steele. So anyone's familiar with Michael Steele, again, Michael Key has the uh, Real Conservative Talk podcast. Michael Steele has his own show, um, the Michael Steele Show. He is currently a, um, a he is running for um, uh, the senator of uh the, he, he is a Democrat running for a senator of North D- Dakota. So the two of them will be will be on talking about um, immigration with, with Bob Ram and I. So I also want to point out a couple of things that Class 1 Probe did. Thank you, uh, Class 1, for the pod beans uh, to myself, to Chill Will, to Bob Ram, to Frankie, to Shy Lady, to Feisty One, and to Crucible. And uh, Shelly, thank you for your uh, gifts and everyone who sent me gifts. Uh, Ray uh, sent gifts to Chill. And Ray, thank you for the one coming to me. So um, thank you for everyone who, who again, shared, shared the show and who, um, who, who participated on the panel and everyone who, who, who came in. Um, I think this has been a, a good show. And again, Chill, you did a really, really g- good job. So I'll pass it to you before I... End it, end it. You want to say anything? I just want to say, yeah, I just want to say thank you, everyone. Thank you for the support. And, um, you know, in the meantime, Solid, you know, I would just, if you ask me to do something, I'm more likely going to do it if I can. And and it goes for anybody in here, you know, that want to, you know, if you need me for some odd reason, just ask. And if I can help, I will help. And thanks, everybody. Great show. And I'll see you very soon. All right. So on that note, everyone, uh, speak your truth, go where the wind takes you. And I hope to see you guys Saturday and enjoy the rest of your day or evening, wherever you you may be. Bye. Good, good job, Will. You did a really, really good good job. And Ray, when you have time, girl, you have to come come up on on the panel because you were saying a lot of good things. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. And GP, man. GP man, we need to get you up here. Class one pro. Varying opinions are welcome. <laughs> and Dina Joe, you also need to come up. I was reading your comments. I was, you know, today was a lot. You <laughs> had to keep up with what everybody was saying. So, and Tuttles, as always, thank you very much for coming. And I'm sure you're cooking right yeah, now. Yeah, Tuttles. <laughs> thank you so much. You gotta do it too. Yeah. you know I don't know dude <laughs> I don't it's know. the media <laughs> when we meet in person I don't know I'm going to send you, I'm have to, send you to, to the moon the way uh, who was that um, Jackie Gleason on, um, on, on, on the honeymooners I'm going to have to send you to the moon <laughs> Okay, everyone, that's it. Uh, Bye. Awesome job, y'all.